Okay guys, time to rebuild yet another carburetor. This is a Tillotson. It came off of this uh, home light zip I'm working on and uh, pretty much this exact same model was also on this old home light Super 31. You can see my video on that, but these are really good carburetors and they were really popular on these older chainsaws. Uh, you can still get rebuild kits for them. This model number was a HL204A, which is printed on the carburetor. You can find that. Rebuild kit for that is a RK that stands for Rebuild Kit 88HL. And we have actually ended up purchasing two different kits because one of them didn't really like the needle and seats in it, but you'll see that in the video. So uh, we are going to take it apart as usual. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. We'll put it in the ultrasonic cleaner. Most of this video is going to be putting it all back together. And there's very interesting part in the middle about some trouble that I had with needles and seats and getting that lever arm lined up. So other than that, it was pretty much business as usual, getting all of these uh, gaskets and membranes in the right order. So let's get started couple of interesting things as I look at this. Um, it is a little unusual in that these speed screws are kind of out here on the sides like that. So that's kind of cool. Kind of come into it from the back instead of usually it's from the side. So I think that's kind of interesting. And then I also noticed on the revalve, if you look down in here, there's a single revalve instead of like two. Sometimes they have two, but um, just one in there that pushes out. Okay, we got it all apart. Nothing unusual. This little screen in here looks like it's been a little bent up. Kind of surprised to see that, but um, hopefully our new kit will come with a new spring, but if it doesn't, we can actually reuse the spring. There's nothing wrong with doing that. Um, this actually looks like a new kit was put in this carburetor. No big deal. We can rebuild it again. It's pretty cheap. Here's our parts that we're going to put in our ultrasonic cleaner here. The two parts water, one part super clean is what I mean to say. In they go. And we're probably going to let this run for about maybe 30 minutes or so. And what this does, if you don't know, is a, a ultrasonic cleaner vibrates these things at a very high frequency and shakes loose any little particles that might be in there. Really good way to clean carburetors. Uh, Okay, we got our carburetor out of our ultrasonic cleaner, and uh, it's pretty clean. So I've been trying to put the new needle and seat in here, and I've ran into a little bit of a problem. So this is the original one that was in it, and you can see, and it works. You can see it's got a spring-loaded lever in it, and that lever is pretty well even with the metering surface, which is what you want because the diaphragm's got a little button on the bottom here, and that pushes down on this thing right here, and that's what releases the needle out of that seat. The problem is the new kit that I got, notice the end of it has a little fork on it, and the needle has a little groove on the head where it not only pushes down with the spring pressure, but it, these things are designed so that when the lever pushes the other way, it can actually pull the needle out in case it gets stuck or something like that. I suppose that's why they do that, but it's very common to see this style on all the newer stuff. So I tried to use this, but what happened is the, uh, the way it fit down in there, because it has to fit under the head of the needle, it was causing this lever to uh, come up too high at an angle here. And sometimes you can bend them down a little bit as a small adjustment, but I had to bend it down way too much, and I didn't like that. So I am not going to use that one out of that kit. 
So I bought another kit, which I bought before and is known to work because I have it in a different saw. So we're going to look at this and see, we're going to compare them and see if anything's different. So, so far, those look to be the same. That's the seat. And then the needles side by side. I don't want to get these mixed up. Um, those are also the same. Not going to worry about that or any of these. I actually like the looks of these gaskets better. Look, you can see the difference. Um, either one of these will work because it just needs to have a hole for the pulse feed. So that's fine. Okay, so almost back to where we started. Um, basically, I tried various combinations of all of these things and I could not get something I was comfortable with. So the best thing that I could come up with was to use the lever that was in it. I did use the little, not this one here because it was too big, but I did use the little brass ring in that because that goes underneath the seat to give it a seal. And it also raises that seat up just a little bit. <clears throat> so that was good. And you, you can't get any closer than that with that lever being level with the body. So that is just spot on perfect. So I'm very comfortable with that. And this carburetor actually sits upside down, you know, in the saw, which means, you know, gravity is working against that needle and it's sitting down. So it's not really necessary to have the little uh, forked hook on that to try to pull the seat out or pull the needle out of the seat you know, it's just going to release it to keep it from staying in the seat. So, it's yes, it's possible it could stick in there. That's why they kind of do them that way. But um, this is the best I can do with what I have. So, we're just going to keep this. Um, to make it easier, print it out the uh, sequence rebuild order. This is actually what it looks like if you're trying to read the words here. But... As I said, these carburetors are upside down, you can see. And so because we're going to be assembling it the other way, I'm going to turn it this way. And so I've actually looked through this. I have everything laid out in this order so we can put it back the way they're supposed to go. And uh, away we go. There's little indexing pins on here. Now I'm going to show you something kind of cool. If if I were to take this and, and it's going to go on like this. Right. Okay. So that's how it is in place. But what I want to show you is if I, if I take this off and I flip it over. So now it's upside down and it's going to go on this piece, which is the cover for the pump. If I lay it on here. Notice what happens. These little kind of peninsula-looking peninsula, peninsula -looking cutouts there, notice that they're covering those two holes underneath. That's where the fuel goes. So what this does is it creates two one-way valves. So fuel's coming in one side, but it, it can't go through the other side because this membrane here is blocking it. And then the, the opposite happens. So these two things work together to, to create a one-way flow. And that's how the fuel pump works. There's, there's pump pressure coming through here from the crankcase, but it's, it, it's driving this diaphragm here that's over on this side in this big area. So that's causing pressure to oscillate. But when it's oscillating, the fuel's flowing through these two check valves, but it can only go in one way. And so that's how all onboard fuel pumps essentially work on two strokes for many, many years, and they still make them that way. Okay, at this point, we're ready to go ahead and start putting these screws in.
Okay, now we're going to put on the outside filter and the cork gasket. This is a new one that does come in the kit. The filter does not come in most kits for Tillotson. I don't know why that is, but <clears throat> this one, I've cleaned it up. You know, it's a little bent and kind of rugged looking, but it's not torn. doesn't have any debris in it, so that's fine. Put it down on there and be careful not to crease it any worse than it's already creased. New cork gasket in there. <clears throat> and then this is important. You got to know when you put this final cap on, which way you want the fitting to face. I happen to know this carburetor is going to be facing like this. And so I want the nipple to be facing this way. Let's see, like that. So that is the way it came off, and that is the way we are going to put it back. Don't have to over tighten this here, it's just plastic with a cork fitting. We're going to go ahead and put our speed screws in. What you want to do is bottom these all the way out, bottom these all the way down till they stop. You'll feel them, but you don't want to you don't want to tighten them too much. You just want them to stop, and that's all. You know, and then we're going to back them out. So, I'm not going to mess with them right now. They're both going to be down in there. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to do a little pressure test on it. And I'm going to pump it up to about 5 PSI or so and see if it holds. It's about 5 PSI watching it. And it's holding pretty steady. I'm looking, I can tell it's got just a little bit of a slow leak, but for the most part that's working. And then, if I try to do a pop-off pressure test, I'm going to pump this up to about, you know, 20 PSI. And I can see it comes back down, and then it stops around 8 or so. That's that's when that needle and seed is closing. We'll do that again. Needle and seed, it's leaking by, it's leaking by, and then it stops somewhere around there. And that's just an indirect measurement to know that it's working. But now I'm going to do something interesting is I'm going to take my mouth and I'm actually going to draw backwards in here, which is emulating what the engine does when it's, when it's uh, aspirating for air. And we should see this drop down. So I'm going to pump it up a little bit more. And I'll let you keep your eye on it while I do this. See it drop down. So all I did is I sucked on that pretty hard, and that draws vacuum. Um, that's probably not the most scientific way to test these things, but it's a 65-year-old carburetor, and I don't know if they even used pop-off testing back then, but it's enough for me to think that this carburetor is in good enough shape to put it on the saw. Okay, very, very important is you have to make sure that this pulse line which I actually tested that by sucking on it and making sure it held my tongue to uh, make sure that inner diaphragm on the pump is sealed, and it is, and then you want to blow in it a little bit and make sure it holds pressure. Kind of an old-school way to check that pump diaphragm, but more importantly is that hole, notice, needs to line up with this hole. So you don't want to put it on like this. You know, you want to make sure you put it on like this, right? You want to make sure that that pulse channel lines up all the way through into the crankcase. If you mess that up, you're not going to have a fuel pump and it, the saw is not going to run right.